Hi, I'm Shelly Wood and this is my tiny sewing room where I make doll clothes sewing videos. Today I'm going to show you how to make a little flannel nightgown which will fit 11 inch fashion dolls like Barbie, Francie and similar sized fashion dolls. Before we begin, please go to ShellyWood.com to download and print this free PDF sewing pattern. Use the pattern to cut out all the pieces shown here. Lay the flannel bodice front on top of the cotton bodice front, keeping right sides together if it matters. Sometimes it doesn't matter. In my case it kind of did. Sew around the neckline and then around each armhole area. Carefully clip your seams. Now throughout this tutorial I will mention other little tutorials that I have available like the whip stitch, the back stitch, etc. And if you look in the description below this video on YouTube you can find those other ones. Invert the bodice front. Okay, now I like to use a chopstick to help with this. The blunt end is real safe and it, it won't poke out your stitches. I like to give it a twist. Press the seams that you've made so far. Now lay one bodice back on top of another, keeping right sides together and you'll notice I have a cotton and a flannel there. Sew around the armhole area and then sew the neckline and part way down the back closure area. You're going to stop sewing one and a half centimeters from the bottom. Now clip and invert this piece as well. Now I wouldn't have used that burgundy colored thread. I would have used something more cream or gray colored, but I do that just so you guys can see it. I would recommend instead using a color of thread that matches your fabric, just an FYI. Notice how I'm using the pokey end of the chopstick to poke out my corners. Press the back piece that you've just sewn and inverted. Now follow these directions for both back pieces. Open up the bottom of the front bodice piece like you see me doing right here. So then you open up the bottom of one back piece and don't panic I have some video footage so you know what to do. Okay now what we're going to do is we're going to open up this unfinished sort of area and I like to think of the underarms coming together so front and back underarms come together and notice I'm connecting the flannel to the flannel the cotton to the cotton and that should help you. You kind of pinch it together. And we're going to sew across this area. So again, I'm connecting flannel to flannel, cotton to cotton, and I'm going to make that little stitch across the just under the under arm. Connect the bodice back to the bodice front, just under the armhole area. So now it looks like this and we have to clip it to make it lay flat like that. So remember when I get to the clipping section that I've already done this one. Okay. Do this for both back pieces, connecting each one to the bodice front with a series of back stitches. Clip the seam where the bodice and back come together where the bodice front and back come together. So now I'm going to do my clipping and I've already clipped the other side so I'm just going to show you how to clip it. You're going to clip here and then right on the other side of that seam right there. Now if this is seeming kind of hard look on my website. I do have easier pajamas. Um, this one I would call kind of medium difficulty but I have some that are for absolute beginners too. Now set this aside for a moment and we're going to work on the skirt. 
And our skirt is a rectangle, so along one of the long sides of the skirt, you're going to fold the fabric once and then a second time to create a hem. I'm using a whip stitch to hem, but you could use a sewing machine. If you need help with the whip stitch, I do have a tutorial for that in the description area below. When you finish the hem, go gather the opposite side of the skirt, but do not tie a knot at the end of your gathers. Leave that loose. Now start your gathers about one and a half centimeters from the edge of the skirt and then finish gathering one and a half centimeters from the opposite side. Before you tie off your gather stitches, make sure the skirt will fit the bodice. It's not enough to just line them up like this because that's just eyeballing it. Instead I recommend that you pin the cotton lining up and away from the bottom edge of your bodice and then with the gather thread still loose and hanging there pin the base of the flannel bodice to the skirt but remember those one and a half centimeters of extra fabric on your skirt at least one centimeter needs to hang past the bodice edge once you're confident the skirt will fit the bodice so it might take a little adjusting, but once you're confident, you can knot your gather thread and cut it free. Now unpin the skirt and adjust the gathers like you see me doing right here. So I've unpinned it and I've tied my knot. Now I'm gonna pull those gathers so they're a little more even, so they're not lumpy on one side. Just kind of give them a tug. And again, I'm checking to make sure it's still like I thought it would be going to fit against that bodice at the bottom. Now stitch the skirt to the flannel bodice piece only exactly as you had once had it pinned. Finish stitching the flannel bodice to the skirt all the way down. Do not remove the straight pins just yet. Fold one side of the skirt in toward the wrong side. It should now be flush with the bodice at its cut edge. Baste it in place there. Do the same for the other side of the skirt. Now you can remove the straight pins from your lining. Fold one edge of the lining in at the bottom and fold the side of the skirt in one more time so that they meet up. It may help to pin the skirt's fold in place, which is what I've done. Now fold the bodice lining up, holding that raw edge between the flannel and the cotton bodices. I know that's complicated, so I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I fold the side, and then it should be flush with the bodice edge. And then I pin this in place and now I'm going to work with that lining and I want to take the raw edge of the fabric of the lining and I'm going to fold it in at the side and then I'm going to fold it under so that it kind of goes in between the flannel and the cotton of the bodice and we're going to hide that raw edge inside the bodice like that. It can be tricky. This part is a little tricky to do. Stitch the back closure of the bodice closed using a whip stitch to seal it. Continue whip stitching down the skirt closure. When you get to about two, maybe two and a half centimeters down, then you can knot your thread. Continue to fold the bodice lining under and whip stitch along the lining's edge, hiding the skirt's gathered edge between the flannel and cotton bodices. As you approach the other side closure, fold it in as well and pin it in place, creating a closure that's similar to the one on the other side. So fold the bodice edge in between the two bodices and continue to whip stitch all along the lining closing it off at the side. 
just like you see here. And now whip stitch down the skirt's back closure too. And you can see I've taken my straight pin out. Now your flannel nightgown looks like this. Bring two straps together like you see me doing here. Here's a little closer look. It can help to pin the bodice in place. Stitch across the top of this shoulder area and back stitch is a good choice for this particular stitch. I do have a back stitch tutorial if you need help look in the description below. Follow the same directions to stitch the shoulder together on the other side. And you'll notice now we're still looking at the lining. All right, so we have it sort of inside out. Now fold your nightgown in half like this and stitch from the bottom of the hem to about four centimeters away from the waistline. That seems a little much, maybe it's more like three. My stitch is about three and a half inches long. Flip the garment right side out like you see me doing here. It's such a soft flannel, I love this. I bought it at Joanne Fabric. It is a really pretty flannel and it's very soft for children to play with. And yeah, this was a gift for children too, so. Add a few dritz size 30 snaps down the back and now you're ready to try it on your doll. For more free printable sewing patterns, for making doll clothes that will fit dolls of many shapes and all different sizes, please remember to visit my website, ShellyWood.com. Hey, before you go, I wanted to mention something in my Etsy store. I've been asked, how do you get so much sewing done? I use a sewing planner to help me achieve my goals. Now, if you go to Etsy right now and look, you know, about the time this is published, it'll be 99 cents. In my Etsy store, I'm offering this editable version of my one page, Simple Sewing Planner, for you to download to your phone or computer. Just type your goals into the text boxes, print it out if you want to and pin it on your sewing room wall or just store it on your computer or your iPad. Set your New Year's resolutions that you can actually achieve and make changes to your planner as goals are met. So I hope you stop by Etsy.com to take a look.